We're going to welcome tonight Casey Miller with Home River Group. He's going to talk to us about the value of having property management in a tech-savvy world. So we're really excited to have him join us. He's going to talk to us not just about Home River Group, but he's also going to talk to us about the many values that there is to be found when you have a property manager. And so we're going to go ahead and turn the time over to him. Thanks, Casey. Thank you. It's great to be here with all of you. <laughs> so it's a great opportunity. I was really excited to be asked to, to talk a little bit about property management and talk a little bit about uh, the value of property management in this tech savvy world. We were speaking a little bit before we started the recording about just all of the tools that are available out there for everyone to use. And, and that's really great. And as a property management company, one of the biggest things that we offer is just volume. We have volume discounts. We can get everything just a little bit cheaper, but let's jump into this. So I wanted to tell you just a little bit about Home River Group. Uh, it started back in 2015 as an amalgam of three large property management companies. It is a wholly owned company, a large investor out of New York City owns all of Home River Group. It's the largest third-party property management company of single-family homes and small multifamily properties in the country. We're in up to just over 40,000 units under management in 65 markets and in 30 states and growing every day. We grow primarily. Uh, it's probably 35% organic and 65% through acquisition. So lots of opportunities to expand. Uh, just couple property management benefits. I wanted to focus specifically on some technology tools just because this is more about property management in a tech savvy world, but just a list of things uh, that property management companies generally offer. And these are items that any do it yourself or can do, but the easy segue from doing it yourself to turning it over to a property management is all the systems that you need to develop yourself are already designed, tested over many, many years and they've proven very effective. So as we refine our systems, all of our clients get the benefit of it. Whereas a lot of times doing it yourself, you have a tendency to try and reinvent the wheel fairly frequently. So basic things like rent collection, leasing renewals, uh, maintenance coordination, maintenance, execution and quality control, periodic inspections, tenant screening, pet screening, CPA ready monthly and annual property accounting, over 200,000, this is Home River specifically, we have over 200,000 rental prospects in our database to help drive traffic to your property. Eviction processing, custom websites, people will be able to find your property through a property management company because they have a tendency to have a higher rank search engine. Uh, manage, let's see, technology tools that assist in delivering quality tenants, 24 seven access to real-time investor reporting, via owner portals, network of fully vetted agents and vendors, property analysis tools and experts to help you grow your portfolio. So once again, we do it all for you and you get to take advantage of that. Do you have any questions on this page? I have one question for you. Sure. So you talk about um, the technology tools to assist in delivering quality tenants. So you're talking about screening and is there anything else? Or is that just basically yeah, code for a, screening? What a what a great segue. So I wanted to I wanted to jump into some basics. So as an investor, as a property owner, as a property manager, if you're owning your own properties and managing your own properties, you care about your return on investment, you care about your vacancy costs, you care about your maintenance costs, and all of these things are really important. Primarily, the most important thing that a management company can do is get a quality tenant into your property in as short a time as possible and manage that tenant throughout the life of it so you don't have to stress. You can spend your time and your, and your priorities elsewhere. So I wanted to talk about three things that a management company will do that you can do, but it's, it's a matter of scale. There's lots of, there's lots of do-it-yourselfers that, that do just fine. And we were talking a little bit earlier about property management is like roads leading to Rome. There are many roads that lead to Rome. There are many right ways to do property management. There's many wrong ways to do property management. So just take this as this is a way that Home River Group does property management, but lots of companies do it slightly different. Ultimately, we all have the same goal in mind, and that's to maximize your return on investment and make sure that your property appreciates in value and 
and it's a it's a great experience for you right so the three p's to getting your property on the market to get it filled to get it with a quality tenant are are these presentation promotion and pricing we talk about these a lot this is what the, our management company focuses on 80 to 90 percent of the time when we're not managing your maintenance and we're not doing things that are very systematized and easy to follow these are the three things that that really matter to most owners you know we'll look at this presentation how does my property look how can i make it look great what's going to attract a great tenant cost quality effectiveness what can i do as a as a do it myself to make my property look great or what can a large property management company do to leverage uh, the assets that they have to make your property go look just that much better. So I have two things here. There's a basic video tour anybody can do on an iPhone, right? This is what anybody can do. But you'd be amazed at how many people don't, first of all, and how effective this can be to get people into your property before it's even available. So we can we can look at this basic video tour. This is 1595 East, oh, 39 my voice two cells. Is this going to be showing like on the recording too? All right. So just as an example. Mill Creek just off of Highland Drive and 3900 South. We'll fast forward. We don't need to watch the downstairs thing. unit that's been fully remodeled. So as we walk through the unit, people can see exactly what the layout Red looks like. Flooring. And I can add my colorful commentary and... They get a good idea, and, and lots of times we'll have this property Sorry, leased really before it's even available because people want to watch and see what the property is going to look like, right? Washer dryer hookups to the left. This is basic technology. We'll go back to our presentation. Okay, uh, this is something that Home River does right now, but you, most realtors are very familiar with three D mapping. Um, but not very many rental companies do it. You do it because it's expensive, but it shows your property really well. This is something that we do that's much, it's a much less expensive product, but it does allow a tenant to have a similar experience to the one we just had, but they can do it at their own pace. They can take a look at the property. They can get a good idea of what we're, what we're offering. Um, they can look at the floors. They can look at the ceilings. This is a 360 degree. Plus, if you notice in the top left corner, it does show the floor plan of the property. Very common in the real estate world, but not very many people are willing to spend three to five hundred dollars on every rental that they have. So, a property management company can do hundreds, if not thousands, of these, and it's a fraction of the cost. But you get all the benefit. It's great. And quite frankly, it only needs to be done once per property unless, you know, unless some you major, major upgrades, upgrades that yeah. you want to um, feature. So the other thing that it does, I didn't show you the pictures, but the if you if you ever go on to just go on to Rentler or KSL and you can immediately tell which photos are professional and which ones are not. You see it in real estate listings as well. Professional photos do have a tendency to garner more traffic. People are more interested in looking at it. It looks nice. And a company like Inside Maps will actually give you the walkthrough and it will give you all of your photos as well. And they're all taken from the same angles, same positions. It's a really easy way to make sure that your property looks good. Promotion, who can see my property? This is something that most do-it-yourselfers won't do. And that's this app called Tenant Turner. Now there's several there's several showing and listing apps like this, but I, I just wanted to show you this one because it's it's kind of cool. We I've used ShowMojo, there's Tenant Turner, there's a whole bunch of softwares out there, but most most investors that have one or two or three properties, it doesn't make sense to invest in something like this. But in a on a large scale, you know, I look at the settings right here. Look at the syndication. We syndicate to Apartment Advisor, Realtor.com, Rental Source, Apartment List, Rental Beast. Have you ever looked on Rental Beast for anything? <laughs> I don't even know what that is. Anyway, Rentals.com, Apartments.com, Trulia, Zillow, Hotpads, Zumper, all of these are automatically brought into the system. And all of these properties, the, the pictures, the 
inside maps, the video tours, they all syndicate across these different properties. And the other thing that's really cool, um, one of the big reasons you're you're looking at a property management company is time, your time management. You want to get your time back. Property management companies across Utah in particular, uh, with the exception of maybe two or three larger companies, they do all self-showings. Most of the time in a real estate sales situation, you want to get in front of the potential buyer. You want to talk to them about it. You want to extol the virtues of the beautiful property that they're going to buy. With the rental world, most of these people, most of the demographic of renters in this day are very tech savvy. They're they're interested in just looking at their own pace. They don't want to be pestered. They don't want to be bothered. So a uh, software like Tenant Turner actually has the ability with code boxes very similar to a Sherlock box or a uh, a Supra box. A tenant turner can a, a tenant a prospective tenant can get a temporary code. They can go walk through the property, and the first at their own leisure. They have a thirty minute time window. They go in and they look at the property. They give us feedback. They let us know what they think, and that all pops up on this nice little owner report that we can send to an owner. The last seven days, eleven leads, five pre qualified, four scheduled uh, showings or viewings three have and then we have some comments i love this unit it's beautiful it's so nice so generally speaking this type of traffic indicates that we're going to have a lease signed very quickly right this is this is a really great click it and forget it software all of your rentals are and your here. owners have access to see those reports they do we send it you can actually if you noticed on that one in particular you can actually turn on this owner report, send owner report automatically. I don't have it checked on this one right now, but yeah. And it will send it out weekly and let them know exactly what the traffic on their property looks like. Uh, most most of the time we like to personalize it a little bit more. So we'll cut and paste and we'll send a little report. JR's probably sent you one if you've had a vacancy. No? I don't have vacancies. <laughs> she doesn't have vacancies. The uh, But you, we want to personalize a little bit more and let them know other things besides this, you know, we might let them know if they have applications in process or, or something like that. So example of a, a really great tool takes a whole bunch of things out of your hands, syndicates across a whole bunch of websites that you don't have to worry about. And it, and it just kind of takes care of itself. Talks about your leads. You have all these people that are interested. They want information. They have, you can email them back and forth figure out what their earliest move-in date is. This is a really cool software that just takes away a whole bunch of busy work out of your day. And there's a, there's a company called ShowMojo that does a very similar, it's a very similar product. Um, KSL and Rentler, you guys all know this, but KSL and Rentler probably garner two thirds of the rental traffic in Utah. Anybody that's moving city to city, county to county, they have a tendency to go right towards those two sites. Rentler and KSL do not at the moment syndicate with ShowMojo or Tenant Turner, but Rentler is almost there. So that's going to be pretty cool. Um, at one point they were in, you know, they were connected. Rentler they, and KSL were together. Yes. Yeah. And then they like, they split, they split, but yeah. then I've heard rumor that they have connections at a certain level again. Um, so they, they do have some connection. Um, but what you're going to start to see is Rentler's technology. Rentler's veered off more into, uh, they'll, they'll help. It's almost like a management software and they're really pushing that side of their business. Whereas KSL has some apply now or some screening options, but they don't, they don't really offer a full suite of management. They're more I, about listing it and Rentler's more about managing it. Yes. So with Rentler, if there's a, a an owner that's really interested in managing themselves, that's that's usually the company I recommend to them because there's no there's no unit limit. You don't have to have so many units to start. Some of the larger softwares like Propertyware or Appfolio, Yardy Breeze is a, is another one. They they have a certain limit and they're really expensive. And Rentler is very cost effective. And it's growing like crazy. And they, they have invested a lot of... KSL is happy with what it is. And it's great. 
Rentler is investing a lot of money in APIs and things that will feed into the larger property management software. So you as the owner with a property management company get all the benefits of Rentler without having to manually do it. Right now, my property managers manually do it for them so that we can make sure we're we're getting the right level of of exposure, yeah. Or promotion, as they call it. Um, this is something everybody has access to, but you might not have known about it. This is These are tools that your property management companies use every day with almost every single property, every single vacancy, every single upcoming vacancy. We put a lot of focus on what that price should be so that we can, A, get it rented as quickly as possible to minimize your vacancy costs, because as you all know, vacancy is your biggest cost. It's your biggest expense. And so we use several of these tools to show you what our base price offer needs to be. That's what we that's what we rely on. And there's a lot of work done on the back end. A lot of times you look at it and say, well, let me just look on KSL real quick, or let me ask my neighbors what they rented their place for. But a lot of, it's not apples to apples. It's, you know, it might not even be in the same zip code. You have a friend that does a rental and he 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 gets three thousand dollars a month in Cottonwood Heights. And you happen to have a nice rental in Magna. It just rents a little bit differently. Um, so I was just going to give you a couple examples of these. I jumped to rent range because we use it primarily. So this is a property in Eagle Mountain. They It gives you an estimate. It gives you a confidence score. So they're 94% confident. Honestly, for the last two years up until this year, last three years, we've been using this software. Generally, that rent that rent range estimate was the low end of what your range would be. The rents were growing so quickly. I mean, it was it was hard to keep up. They were eight to twelve percent growth a year in rents, which is great. And but this does show the low for the zip code, the high for the zip code. That shows there's a, a pretty big disparity. Normally in you normally you see that in places where there's really old neighborhoods surrounded by larger, newer neighborhoods. So uh, it also shows your days on vacancy. It shows a whole bunch of comparables. It gives you all these different things. These are all four bed, three bath, or three and a half or four bath houses. And then it shows you, it's it's not comparing apples to oranges. It's not getting, a, you don't have a two bedroom apartment. We're looking at all single family homes. And you can look at that range right there. It goes from 3,000 to 22. 2200 and they estimated this person's at 27 this this particular property was a brand new house never been lived in so they were going to get i think we ended up renting it at 28 50 so this gives you an example and how's that compared to with today's interest rates how's that comparing to their mortgage um so they bought it right before the interest rates shot up uh it's it's hard to buy unless you put a lot of money down as you guys know it's hard to make your rents cover your mortgage. You're you're going to be you're going to be net negative most months. Um, but over the last five years, with the equity that's grown in most of these properties, you're growing at ten to twelve to fifteen percent a year. A lot of times, it, you know, depending on what your criteria is, you can say that makes sense to invest in a property like that. And a company like so Home River Group has investment consultants that they can go and they can look at your portfolio or they can look at prospective properties. I got a call today. Um, one of our, one of our owners wants to buy in Eagle mountain. He says, I want to invest in two or three more properties. Can you send me any information about Eagle mountain? And I pulled up rent range comparisons. Uh, the next one we talk about is rental meter, which is another software, uh, or another, service it, it's similar i don't like rental meter quite as much me personally but it is available out there and you can sign a subscription and it's you know 70 80 90 100 a month if it's worth it to you you can do it if it's not you know that's just one of the other added benefits to having a property management company do all this legwork for you and then i do like that rental meter does show the historical trend lines this is a great thing about owning rental properties they uh I can't remember who said it, but he said, if you want to look like a genius in real estate, just buy any property. It doesn't matter what and hold it for at least 10 years and you're going to look like a genius in real estate. 
So you look at this particular property, Salt River, it started back in 2020, average rents were right around 1350 and it's up over $2,000 today. So and then they also give a comparative analysis. You see the properties that are around it and what those re relative prices are. Um, I'm gonna put a plug in real quick, just because anybody who does rent or manage properties, you are invited to be part of the Utah Rental Housing Association. It used to be called the Utah Apartment Association. They changed it to the Rental Housing Association to help encompass all rental housing properties. It's not just apartments. And there are a lot of really great tools. This one particularly is the Industry Insights Report from winter 2023. And here's South Jordan Harriman, Ochre Mountain. That's right where we're at, right? So it gives you a nice snapshot of the population, 122,000. It's probably increased since this. This was taken on the most recent U.S. Census Bureau. Number of renters, 20,000. Number of rental, usins, rental units, 7,800. So across Utah in general, they say for every three jobs created, there are two rental spaces available. So there is... In the legislature and in the governing bodies of the of Utah, a lot of people pushing for more affordable housing, larger numbers of affordable housing, and uh, yeah. So this just kind of gives you an idea. Here's your average rents for your studios: one bedroom, two bedroom, all the way up to a five bedroom. The I find that these are pretty close to what we would what we would be getting in this area. So there's a lot of three bed, two bath townhomes here. And a three bed, two bath townhome is between 21 and 25 usually. If it's one of the newer, nicer ones, you might get 26, 27 out of them. Uh, the downside is there are a lot of them in this area. So, you know, that does have a tendency to depress the price slightly. Any questions on this? No, I would say though that um, that's very interesting because I don't think of this area being that high with smaller units. I think of it more as being a lot of single family homes. So it's really yeah. interesting to know there's that. I mean, I know that there's apartment complexes going in and there have been over the last several years, yeah. but that's still actually a, a interesting number to see that there's that many rental units. Yeah. Oh, question. I just noticed it says, excuse me, it says non-apartment rentals. Um, and so specifically that these are really looking at houses, townhomes, but not a standard large complex. So it'll, it'll, this industry insights reports, it's about a 75 page report. Uh, it's available on the rental housing website for any member. You can just download it. It comes out annually, I think. Um, I just happened to grab this one because we're, we focus primarily on single family management. So in the, in the property management world, there's, the multifamily managers, which is just kind of a different animal. So in the single family world, that's why I pulled this non-apartment. So. Oh, that makes sense. I just, and, and that's primarily also, I think obviously this audience, Yeah. but I was just, I saw that note. So I just want to verify. Yeah. No, that's, that's good observation. Um, so a couple things where we're going. I was hoping that there would be a big group that I could ask this question to, because I find it really interesting. If you haven't started using AI in your property descriptions and other things, you're spending a lot of time doing things that you don't need to be doing. Um, yeah, it's becoming more common to use it with um, listings for our real yes, estate agents. Yes. Um, in the property management world, we use it a lot with, uh, because, so anybody who's managed properties understands when you have an upset tenant or a, frustra a frustrating situation or some situation that's completely outside of your control, but it is impacting your tenant. And therefore, it is impacting your life and your ability to prioritize your time to do the things that you want to do. You're having to deal with some of these other things. And I know, me personally, when there's a, a charge situation, you have a tendency to spend a lot of time writing just the right email. I mean, it can take 30 minutes, 45 minutes as you write the perfect email to say, this is all the information I got to give this tenant and I need to do it in a professional way that they understand I'm on their side. I'm trying to help them out. Um that same email can be written in about 15 seconds. It's absolutely amazing. I, yeah, I, I was going to show you on my computer because I have a bunch of pre 
responses like, write me a property description for a four bed, two bath house with a large yard fence and a two car garage. Um, write an email to a tenant who's late on rent and needs to pay, needs to pay a ASAP. So I can't log into this computer and show you, but if you do get a chance, chat.openai.com, you should play around with it. It can save you tons of time. That's just another tool that most of your property management companies have started using because we manage a, a ton of rentals and I don't have 45 minutes or an hour to write that perfect email to the tenant. So you have chat AI do it. This is going to become more and more common. Um, well, property industry. management is all about leverage, whether it's leveraging your time as the investor and owner of the property, whether it's the property manager leveraging their time to be able to service more tenants. I mean, that's the whole point of technology, right? Is yeah. that we're leveraging that as a tool to be able to make our quality of life better for the people that, for our own lives and for the people that we're serving. Yeah. And there was a time, you know, we went back to that, the syndication capabilities that Tenant Turner has, or one of these other softwares. I used to employ two dedicated resources that would list all of my properties on all the different websites that we had. And with the advent of a tenant turner, it's a fraction of the total price. So it makes me as a, a property management company, I'm less likely to be working on additional fees or additional revenue that I'm trying to get from my owners or I'm trying to get from my tenants because I can make my business just that much more effective and efficient and cost effective, right? I can... Whether it's a service or whether it's a software tool, if you see it as a employee, you're not having to pay, then you realize that it's what a leverage it really is. Yeah. We all have to have employees as well. Obviously, that's part of ledger leveraging our own time. Yeah. But if you can take it a step further and have that employee use the available software tools, it's amazing what you can accomplish. Yeah. Another uh, really popular trend right now in the where we are going of property management is uh, virtual assistants. They've been around for a little while. Do you have one? <laughs> so people have their own individual one, but property management companies will employ entire companies of virtual assistants that will coordinate all of their maintenance emergencies. Um, for example, we use a company out of South America that any maintenance emergency that comes in after five o'clock or on a Saturday or Sunday, these people are trained to dispatch the right vendors to get the to get to save the property, to minimize that damage and get it done as quickly as possible. And as far as the owner is concerned, you know, if it's obviously their house is on fire, we're gonna let them know. And it doesn't matter if it's Saturday or Sunday or middle of the night. But generally speaking, something that is an emergency that's caught, that's fixed, or that's stopped or mitigated. We'll let them know on Monday morning. Hey, by the way, this is what happened over the weekend. I hope you had a great weekend with your family. Um, this is what we dealt with over the weekend, just to let you know about your property. I think most people that do manage their own properties, um, it only takes one or two of those experiences that are that we talked about right up here in the benefits of a property management company. It only takes one or two of these negative experiences before you either, A, you want to sell your rentals and get rid of them. Please don't do that. Please don't do that. If it's not Home River Group, there's 25, 35 management companies in the Salt Lake Valley. I would say five or 10 of them, which are really good companies. They run great. Um, they take care of their owners. They have great processes. And just a one negative eviction, one one awful eviction, it could sour you on investing in real estate for the rest of your lives. And we don't want that to happen. Eviction processing, I can evict a tenant in about 20 days from soup to nuts, and you don't have to do anything. That's a really great benefit if you have that tenant that just decides they don't want to pay. Or a life situation happens and they need to, they need to take care of it. We are neutral third parties that enforce the lease with the tenant and educate owners as to the management agreement. That's what we spend the majority of our time doing or educating our owners what they can and can't do based on the, the law, the laws of the land. Um, I'll give you two. Can I give you just two examples really quick? So uh, tenant has a situation. Are we running out of time? Okay. We should have plenty of time. I tried to make this fast so we could have lots of questions. Um, here, an example of an owner. So 
if you manage, if you have four or less, four or fewer properties and you manage them yourself, you're not held to the federal fair housing guidelines. Now, it's always smart to adhere to those things, but you're not technically required to adhere to those things. If a third party management company manages for you, they are absolutely required to do that. So I had a situation about two weeks ago where an owner had spent a lot of money remodeling a great apartment, really nice apartment. We got two qualified applicants very quickly. They screened very nicely. They passed all of our qualifications. They had all the right ducks in a row. They had two emotional support animals. Emotional support animals are considered prescriptions. They're not pets. And if it's a prescription, just like Xanax or, you know, Oxycontin or whatever that you can't, you can't deny a, ten, a prospective tenant based on that. So he was very, very concerned that they were going to damage his property, that they were going to, and he said, absolutely not. I will not rent to them. And as a management company, I had to sit him down and we had to go through the legality of what this meant. He was going to open himself up to a lawsuit for sure. It just so happened that these tenants, one of them worked in the courts and the other was a therapist. So they knew exactly what the laws were. And I walked through it with him. I got our attorneys on the phone. We walked through it with him. He still insisted on terminating the lease. And we had to terminate management. That's a sad story because he's a great owner, invests great money into his properties. They look nice. But as a property management company, we're held very strictly to those those laws. I told him as a single owner, with he had four properties. You can manage them yourself. No problem. And you're not held to the same exact standard, but I recommend this course of action. And he ended up talking to his personal attorney and came back to us uh, about a week later and said, my attorney told me the same thing your attorney told us. And thank you for protecting me. Thank you for looking out for me. Thank you for understanding the law and how it applies to me because I didn't know. Um, on the other side of the coin, you have you know, interactions with tenants all the time. Anybody who has investment properties knows that people just don't read. They just don't read their leases. And, you know, when, when there's a problem, when there's a, a situation in their family, when they call you and they complain and they want your sympathy, you know, I always tell my property managers, you can be empathetic and understand their situation, but you can't be sympathetic to the point where you're not going to enforce the lease. That's the duty and responsibility that we have. So um, all of those dirty, dirty jobs and interactions are the bread and butter of a good management company. And, you know, we train daily, weekly, monthly, annually on the best way to enforce the lease, the, the adjustments that we need to make to our lease according to the new laws that are coming down the pipe. Um, and the best way we can protect our, our owners and, and the investors that, that go with us. I want to ask a related question to that. Sure. I think that's um, especially for your smaller investors that have, let's say that they have six properties. So they're over the four limit, um, but they're used to being very much hands-on. And they have like three single family homes and then they have, uh, or they have four single family homes and they have two du duplexes. So they're in the situation where they're used to doing it on their own, but they're getting older or maybe they're getting busier with, with their day job, whatever the reason. And they look at, they're looking at having it come to a property manager and they're like, yeah, but you guys take so long to get a renter in there. I, you know, I show it and somebody gets in there fast or, you know, you guys take a long time to get all your vendors and lined up and, 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 you know, I can, I can get in there and paint it myself over the weekend, you yeah. know, or whatever, whatever those types of excuses are. So that in our group, that tends to be a lot of the type of investors we have, you know, there's, they're smaller investors. So can you speak to the value of, yeah, I mean, people can do it that way. They can manage it that way, but that buffer between them and the tenants, whether it's being sympathetic to the fact that grandma's been in the hospital or the ESA animals or the fact that, yeah, it may not get painted over the weekend, but it's going to be a professional job and it's going to show really well. I mean, can you just kind of speak to that 
as a general rule because the turnover for someone that can you. you know show it while the last one is still in it versus you know a management company that's not showing it till somebody's moved out and it's completely prepped there's a bigger time gap but there's a value for that can you speak to that value yeah so uh the first first couple things that jump to mind um because most of your professional management companies are have a very robust screening process, it does have a tendency to weed out certain candidates. Um, this is the experience that we have. People that have evictions or felonies have a tendency to seek out do-it-yourself landlords because the background checks that they use aren't sometimes not, they're not as in-depth and they miss evictions, they miss felony convictions. And sometimes they turn out to be great tenants. That's not to say that they're not. I mean, sometimes it's that second chance that they need. And you as the owner are like, I couldn't have been happier with this person. They paid the rent every day for five years and left the property immaculate. You know, they fixed every problem that they had. That's That happens. It definitely does. That's an exception to the rule in general. Normally what happens is if somebody's been evicted before, they will be evicted again. You'd be shocked at the number of second and third evictions that we do see occasionally. Um, normally, the screening process is robust enough that you just, you don't give them the chance. But in my, in my position at the Rental Housing Association, I interact with two different eviction attorneys. And that's, it's a common, it's a common conversation that we have. So Yes, they can do it themselves. You do get um, a more robust and ironclad process if you go through a through a property management company. It might take a little bit longer, but it is designed to protect your property in the long run and protect you as the owner from from the risk that comes with, you know, if the background check isn't as exact as it needs to be. Um, as far as vendors go, it's hard with do-it-yourself landlords because there's a lot of them that don't they don't monetize their time, okay? So your average doctor is making, you know, $200 an hour. And that doctor says, I'll just go in and paint it myself and it's gonna take him eight hours. Well, at $200 an hour times eight hours, it just costs $1,600 to paint that one room. And I could have had it painted for $1,000 and he could have gone out and been earning that $1,600 at the same time. Does that make sense? So. That's something that we we have a tendency to minimize our own time and the value of it. And if you have plenty of free time, by all means, once again, not, all roads lead to Rome eventually. Yeah, so, your retired rent uh, landlord that wants to putter and yeah. take care of the rentals is different than this property than a, you that know, we look at. Thirty-five year old investor who's got a yes. great day job and just wants this for passive income. This property that we looked at right here. This particular owner is 85. He mows his own lawn. He loves to go and mow the lawns on his properties. He loves to give me little tips when he sees tenants doing certain certain things. He just likes to be involved. But not having to deal with late rent, not having to deal with evictions, not having to have the more difficult and confrontational conversations, it's worth it to him to say, look, I just... I want to. I want to be. He's in St. George right now. He told me he was leaving this morning, and there's a burned out car in one of his parking lots, and we just got to get it towed. So he, I went by. We're going to get it towed. No problem. No harm. That's no foul. a story I want to hear afterwards. Right? <laughs> well, the sad thing is, is the tenant. I called the tenant, and he. He said I went out to start my car to pick go pick up my daughter. He's like I started my car and it made this weird pop, and then I saw flames coming out of the motor. And he's like, I just jumped out and it burned the entire car out right there in the parking lot, piles of glass everywhere as it broke the windows out. And so I asked him to clean up the glass, make it into nice piles and put it in the dumpster. And then he needs to get it towed and he has until Friday to get it towed or get it removed. And that was last Friday and he didn't get it removed. And so I gave him an extra couple of days, gave him a call. Now it's, it's probably going to be towed. I posted the notices again today and now it'll be towed and the owner will be happy, right? I'll have to pay the fee. And he'll have to pay the, I I kind of wonder if, if a tow company is going to come and get it 
because he's going to be like, "Now nah, you can keep it. I don't really want it. It's, I already got my insurance money. Anyway, neither here nor there. So, yeah. The, yeah. Our, our, our overarching purpose as a management company isn't to manage everyone's properties. You know, we're here as a service if you need us. If you don't need us, that's just fine. You know, they say only about, Oh, last numbers, it was like 67% of available rentals in the United States are managed by professional companies, which means there's a lot of do-it-yourselfers out there that are doing just fine. Um, in fact, you have a question? Oh, all right. In fact, I have some colleagues that run a large management company that set up a Rent Like a Pro series of videos to help do-it-yourselfers learn how to do it. Because... Ultimately, we talk about it a lot in the rental housing industry. When there are tenant advocacy groups pushing certain legislation in our government, it has a tendency to be a result of a small property management company or a do-it-yourself property manager that didn't understand what the law was or didn't understand the legality of what they were getting into or some of the ordinances, some of the um, habitability requirements here in Utah. And those kind of complaints have a tendency every time to get bubbled up to these tenant advocacy groups. And we talk a lot about it in the Rental Housing Association um, about how we need to educate everybody, how we want all rental operators to get involved in these types of organizations because when everybody is more educated, everybody is everybody will perform at a more professional level and that's going to minimize those complaints and minimize the impact that that can have on the rental housing uh, on the rental housing industry which impacts everybody you know either directly or indirectly so. yeah that is a great note to end on i really appreciate that we're running out of time so we won't have time for everybody to ask all their questions what is the best way for them to get hold of you because like you said earlier you're not just um, with home river group but you're actually also uh, serving on the board of the rental housing authority or aso association association yeah yeah and so. um so we would love to know how to get hold of you yeah there's my contact info um i'm also the vice chair of the national association of residential property managers here in utah so i'll be the i guess i'll be the board chair next year um but i i love talking to people about the industry i love talking to people about their rentals i i don't expect to do a sales pitch with every single person in fact i have a tendency to be a very soft salesman if if it works for you that's great we would love to help you take care of your property we'd love to provide you all the great benefits that we can um, for a small percentage and if if it if you don't want that you just want to learn you just want to become a little bit more informed or you want to learn about some of the tools that are available to you happy to share everything with you this is the more we know you know the the more professional this industry is and the better we all do so that's ultimately what my goal is and i am lucky enough to be employed by a company that you know espouses those ideals so well thank you so much for your time and i'm sure that there will be people that reach out to you thanks so much for joining us tonight okay. no problem